Hello, I'm Mr. Wild, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to make a large bowl using a slab drape mold technique. These are the tools and equipment I'll be using for this project. About 12 pounds of stoneware cone 5 clay, a rolling pin with clay thickness strips, which are just long thin pieces of wood cut to the same thickness, a 14 inch round Amico Plastibat, a football, a bowl, and plastic wrap, or saran wrap, or even newspaper works, and then a 9 inch square Amico Plastibat, my fettling knife, needle tool, wooden knife, sponge, loop tool, and then also my wire clay cutter, and then I'll also be using an embroidered shirt with exposed stitching that I'll use to press into the clay using the impressing technique and I'll supply a link at the end of this video for all of my tools. I'm cutting off a chunk of clay here, probably about 12 pounds, maybe a little less, uh, but then what I do is I close that bag back up and I seal it closed. The last thing I want is my, for my clay to dry out. And then I just take the clay and I just start uh, using my hands and pounding in the corners. Sometimes I'll lift the clay a little bit and uh, pound it against the countertop but I just want to round off any corners or any edges and start making the clay into a circle-like shape. I use a piece of cardboard uh, between the clay and the countertop just because as I'm pounding against the clay, I don't want it sticking to the top of the counter. The next technique that I move into is a lift and throw technique where I actually pick up the clay and throw it against the cardboard. When I lift and throw down, I come down at a sort of an angle so it's not just straight down flat against the cardboard. Now I'm moving on to the rolling pin. And with the rolling pin, I go front and back, side to side, and even diagonally as needed. When rolling around the outside edges of the clay, I try not to put too much pressure on the edges so that the clay around those edges stays just as thick as the clay in the middle. I still flip the clay over occasionally as I like slabbing it from both sides. And sometimes I get to the point where I will slap and pat the clay down to help determine that the thickness of the clay is even throughout the entire slab. But then I'll go back and roll it with the rolling pin to give it an evenly smooth look. For a reminder about slabbing clay, you can visit my video on how to make clay slabs, which I'll share in the description. Like I said at the beginning, I have a couple of embroidered shirts where the stitching sticks out that I'm going to use to create an impressed pattern. Leaves, pine needles, textured fabrics, and jewelry also work really well for this, but really as long as you can press it into the clay, it'll work. You just need to be careful not to press too hard uh, to where the clay gets too thin. You don't want to break through. But as you can see with the shirt, I'm just setting it around. I'm just laying it on the clay and then using the rolling pin to press it into the clay. I'm trying to be pretty careful as I do this that I just roll where that embossed pattern is, or that embroidered pattern is. So lastly, as I'm using the rolling pin to impress the embroidered pattern, I try to avoid pressing too much along the edges so that I don't flatten them too much. Now I'm setting up the objects that I'm going to drape my clay slab over. Starting out with the 13 inch plastic bat, I set the bowl in the middle of it the purpose of the bowl is to keep the football from rolling away. I wrap a couple of layers of the plastic wrap around the football, and I do this to create a barrier between the clay slab and the football so the clay won't stick to the football when it's time to separate the two. I'm lifting up my slab and draping it over the football. I take a few moments to adjust and gently press the clay to where I want it to be. The clay is still plastic enough or flexible enough that I can move it around a little bit without the fear of it breaking and falling apart. 
I want the edges of my drape mold to have a clean cut look and feel. So I use my fiddling knife and I cut around the edge of the clay slab, removing those roughened edge pieces, giving the drape mold that clean cut look and feel, and remove all the excess scraps. I'm placing cups strategically under the edge of the clay. It's going to give the rim of the bowl, once I turn it over, a wavy, clamshell-like appearance. I use different sizes of cups and cylinder shapes to give the rim some randomized variety. To make the feet, I've coiled out four short pegs and shaped them into cones, which I set in a rectangular pattern. I'm using the 9-inch square plastibat to determine that the feet are all at the same level so that the bowl will sit flat. I'm using my needle tool now to draw the lines around the feet so I'll know where on the slab I need to score. I'm changing to my fettling knife to score the clay. First the slab, then the foot. I'm adding slip to the foot, then I attach it to the slab. I press down with a little bit of pressure because I want the two pieces to join together, but I don't want to distort either piece of clay. I use my fingers and then the wooden knife to remove the excess clay. And then I repeat the process for the other three feet. I score the clay, add slip, press the pieces together, then smooth out the excess slip. Oftentimes I'll wipe away the excess slip with my finger really, really quickly. Uh, I'll use the wooden knife to pull off some of the extra. But then I'll exchange the wooden knife for a sponge. A slightly damp sponge is great for smoothing out the clay. I'm resetting the plastibat to make sure the feet will help the bowl sit flat and even. I do not want my bowl wobbling or rocking back and forth because one leg is too short. I sign my name while the clay is still soft. For impressing my name, I don't hold the needle tool like a pencil, but instead lay the needle tool almost flat and drag the needle to create clean, straight lines that I'll form into letters. I've let this sit uncovered for about 15 hours now, and the clay has stiffened to leather hard. I'm using the loop tool to shave down the jagged edges, then I'll switch to a slightly damp sponge which I'll use to round off any remaining jagged or sharp angled corners. I gently remove the cups where needed, then move back in with the sponge to give it that nice, clean, rounded edge. If there's other areas that look kind of rough as well, or cracked possibly, I might take the sponge and go over those areas to smooth those out, but I'm also going to be very careful to avoid uh, using that sponge to blend out my design, especially that impressed pattern. I really want to preserve that pattern. All right, the moment of truth, flipping this thing right side up. Coming underneath from two sides, I lift the drape mold by lifting the football and carefully balance it with one hand while I remove the other objects out of my workspace. Flipping the clay over is kind of scary, but I'm going to spread out my fingers so I'm touching as much of the surface of the clay as I can to spread out the pressure I'm putting on the clay as I flip it over. Then with a careful amount of pressure against the football and for my hands, I turned the drape mold right side up. I then very carefully set my drape mold down, resting it on my 9-inch square plastibat. Then remove the football. The completed, though unfired, project. A clamshell shaped bowl that will look quite nice as a coffee table centerpiece or decorative bowl somewhere else.